Hello everybody and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we're going to be going over chapter 22 from Halliday Resnick Walker's 10th edition book, which is about electric fields. The electric field is a vector field defining how much electric force a test charge would feel if it was placed at a certain location. So the electric field is defined as the force that the test charge feels over the actual charge of that test charge. And conversely, if we know the electric field, and if we know the test charge's charge, then we can figure out the force that acts on it. The electric field of a point charge is given by Coulomb's constant times its charge divided by the radius squared, or the distance squared, which is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon 0 times r squared. Note that this is only for one single charge. If we have more than one charge, or if we have a distribution of charges, we're going to have to do some integration or summing. And we're going to go over that later in the video. And the last thing to note is that the electric field is a vector. So when you're summing up electric fields, you do the exact same thing as if you were summing up forces. One big conceptual topic in electric fields are electric field lines. Electric field lines extend away from the positive charges, where they come from, and go towards negative charges, where they go into. If we only have one positive charge, we can imagine it as a negative charge at infinity, and we can imagine all the electric field lines ending at that infinitely far negative charge, and similarly for negative charges as well. At any point, the electric field vector must be tangent to the electric field line through that point, and in the same direction. Also, in a plane perpendicular to the field lines, the relative density of the lines represents the relative magnitude of the field there, with greater density for greater magnitude. So if you look at the image on the bottom left, since you see that A has lower density of electric field lines than C, we can conclude that the electric field near C is greater than the electric field near A. Before we move on to distribution of charges, we'll look at dipoles, which are two equal in magnitude, oppositely charged objects placed a certain distance apart. So the electric field is given by this equation, which can be derived by summing the electric fields created by each of the charges. The only steps that we really need to note here are the third to last one, where we substitute P, which is the dipole moment, equals the magnitude of the charge times the distance between the two charges. And that's the dipole moment, which is given by a vector pointing towards the positive charge. And the second to last step, because we're assuming that point P is very far away from the dipole compared to the separation distance, because the two charges are assumed to be very close to each other. So if we look at the r squared minus a squared term given in the third to last step, since a is really small compared to r, it just basically simplifies to r squared. And then we can simplify and get simpler equations. The torque and potential energy of a dipole are given by these equations. You can see the derivation of torque there, I'm not going to go over that, and you can see the derivation of potential energy here. The torque is given by the cross product of the dipole moment times the electric field, and the potential energy is given by negative the dot product of the dipole moment times electric field. So these following electric field equations are for a distribution of charges. You do not need to memorize these. So for an infinite plane, the electric field is given by the surface charge density divided by 2 times epsilon 0. And the surface charge density is just how much charge are there per unit area. Note that there is no distance in this electric field equation, which means that the electric field caused by an infinite plane only depends on the surface charge density. For an infinite line, the electric field is given by lambda, or the linear charge density, which is the amount of charge per unit length, divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 times the distance away from that line. So you do not need to memorize the infinite plane equation and the infinite line equation because although you'll need to integrate to find it using the electric field equations, you'll learn a formula in the next chapter that will help you derive this really quickly. The electric field given by a charged ring and a finite disk, you have to use integration. And I'm not going to read these electric field equations out, but basically, z is the distance from the point p to the center of the ring or disk that we're measuring from. And r is the radius of the disk. And q is a charge of the charged ring. And sigma is the surface charge density again. So we'll go over one derivation for the electric field. The electric field for a finite line of charge. To derive this equation, we have to look at the electric field caused by every single point charge from the line. 
So to do this, we split the line into some infinitely small sections, which we can approximate as point charges. So if we look at the diagram on the bottom right, we see a charge labeled in red, which has magnitude of the linear charge density times a small distance dx. So the electric field that that causes will just be Coulomb's constant times the magnitude of that charge divided by the distance squared. However, in this equation, we're only trying to find the z direction of the electric field, which means that if we look at the image on the left, we see that we have to use some trigonometry to figure out what portion of the electric field that we actually care about. So we just add that to our equation, we integrate, we eventually get the electric field in the z direction is given by that formula right there. If you want to see the full proof, you can comment in the comment section below and we can make a video on that. That's all there is in this chapter. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more AP Physics videos.